Hello, and thank you for joining us. This is No Sound Bites Allowed, and I am your host, Michael Voss, Dragon of the Southern Tier. I'm happy to be here with you today as we talk about a very important issue, something that has been growing in importance and in its popularity, or at least its frequency, around the world since December of 2020. And it's something that is now affecting even the smallest of communities around the United States, as well as around the world. So we're going to address that in just one second. But first, we do want to mention, if this is the first time that you have joined us, we want to welcome you and we thank you for being part of our audience. We want you to know that we do long-form political commentary. And every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we do a live stream with you. We reach out to you on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, DLive, essentially all the social media and internet that the internet overlords will allow to be able to hear from you on your tweets, your chats, and your phone calls to let us know what you think about the things that are affecting us all across the world. And we open this up to everyone in the world because we believe in the First Amendment, the right to free speech. Even if your governor does not believe that, even if the internet overlords disagree, we want to hear your voice and we wish to hear you join us every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We hope we'll see you there next Sunday. But to the issue that's going on today, this is a big deal. It's an issue, like we said, has started back in December of 2020. You may recall... But we had been speaking with Larry Sharp, a libertarian, and we had mentioned to him in December of 2020 the fear of the vaccine passports and the essential mandate that they would be requiring. In fact, we mentioned to him that it would be effectively no choice for American citizens denying our freedom and our rights and that there was a high potential that this was going to happen. Now, at the time... Many of our politicians were telling us, no, that was not possible, that we misunderstood. Well, we followed that up on January 3rd of 2021, reviewing how likely it had become just since December, and it got more and more likely. But it wasn't just in America, because we find with the BBC News that in February 20th of 2021, in Australia, there was an anti-vaccination protest held because the Australian people were rejecting the mandates that their government were putting on the public. And then in France, on July 24th of 2021, there were French protesters, hundreds of French protesters, who came out to reject the vaccine passports and the vaccine mandate that their government that President Macron of France had guaranteed and had promised would not apply to the people of France, that they would not have these mandates. And yet, that policy was changed, and now the people are suffering. But perhaps more recently, and in the United States, many Americans may be familiar with Arnold Schwarzenegger, on August 12th of 2021, it was Arnold Schwarzenegger, the former governor of California and a celebrity uh, in the movies, he came out and stated that his desires for individuals to be uh, vaccinated was more important than the individual personal freedom to decide your health care. In fact, he said, and I am quoting him, quote, screw your freedom, end quote. That's Arnold Schwarzenegger, the former California governor's point of view about your personal choice for your health care. Now, we do want to take a moment and say, of course, whatever you feel about the vaccine is, of course, your right. And if you have questions about being vaccinated or anything in your health care, we do suggest reach out to your doctor, to your medical professionals that you trust, and ask them about your personal needs and your personal health care. But that's not what Arnold Schwarzenegger was saying. Arnold Schwarzenegger said, you don't have that right. You don't have that freedom. You must do as he wishes, as Hollywood is demanding, as certain politicians are demanding. And obviously, many people were very upset. 
but some decided to take it even further. And that happens to be George Takei, which on August 15th, only three days after Arnold Schwarzenegger said that the individual freedoms of Americans were not important, well, George Takei says he wants to see people who are unvaccinated to suffer. He w literally is looking for individuals to suffer medical ailments. He says, and I quote, the willfully unvaccinated who wind up in hospitals from COVID should not receive priority medical care over other very sick or injured people who are as much in urgent need of medical care. That's a very strong statement. He goes on to say, and I quote, anti-vaxxers think they are owning us liberals by refusing to get vaccinated. But as the kids say, this is an epic self-own. This is an incredibly strong statement of ill will. This is something that he would actually wish harm on individuals who are not agreeing with his personal views, regardless of their medical uh, uh, needs, their medical preferences. That other Americans' freedom to choose should be denied and According to Mr. Takai, as a consequence, they should suffer in the worst ways possible because it isn't what he wants. That's very troubling. And obviously, this is something that has not been agreed upon around the world or in the United States. We've seen just a few hours ago in Canada, uh, the New York Times is has uh, published that an anti anti-vaccine protests occurred in Canada outside of a hospital. In Greece, healthcare workers are protesting compulsory, mandatory vaccinations, similar to what's happening in New York State. And speaking of New York State, ABC News is reporting that two days ago, there were protests at New York Presbyterian Hospital versus the vaccine mandate. And we can go through many other states. The Daily Sentinel record, uh, has reported protests against vaccine mandates. In Bangor Daily News, the Los Angeles Times in Santa Monica, vaccine mandates are a big deal. And most recently, in my own community, in the southern tier of New York in Broome County, the vaccine mandate that had been issued initially by former disgraced Governor Andrew Cuomo and now continued under Governor Holchel has resulted in a protest. In fact, there was a vaccine mandate protest held outside of the UHS hospital in Johnson City, New York. And the thing that's really of interest and note here is, and we want you to be clear, we first heard about the vaccine mandate on August 28th when we received this notification. It's for the United for Freedom, Courage, Respect, and Unity. This was an event organized by individuals, healthcare workers and professionals, and other individuals who were concerned about the vaccine mandates. And they had requested that on September 3rd, between 4 and 5.30 p.m., that anyone who is concerned about the vaccine mandates, the denial of the choice by American citizens, that they should come together in Johnson City. This was a nonpartisan event. Individuals of any and all political preferences were welcome to join, whether they were medical professionals or just regular citizens. We received this notica notification on August 28th. At the same time, this notification was sent out to all local news media. Now we want to be very we want to be very clear about this. We know that as of the morning of September 3rd, all local news media, whether talk radio or newspapers or, in fact, uh, the television stations, all local news media declined covering the event. In effect, we would be the only ones that would be, become, be going present and covering this event both live and as we are now. That's troubling that the public were told that. But because there were so much of a response, which we will be showing you in just a few moments, 
because the outpouring of the public was so huge that it could not be denied, it could not be blamed or, or accused of just fringe individuals, we see that the reporting changed. Not only did we see the news media come out and cover the event, but they covered it as disgruntled employees and residents. Disgruntled residents. Well, that's not fair, nor is it accurate. These weren't individuals who were upset. These weren't employees that were disgruntled about their uh, employment. We spoke to several doctors. We spoke to several nurses, several healthcare workers, as well as members of the community, some of them on the record and some off of camera, to ask them. They weren't upset about UHS. They're upset about the policy from New York State that disregards their personal freedoms, that it disregards their personal health care choices. That's what they were upset about, not UHS. They were upset about their leaders and the overreach of government each and every time. And in fact, several doctors, several uh, nurses, and other health care officials that we spoke to have stated that they are looking to move out of New York State to go to other states, reducing the number of healthcare workers in New York because they could not reconcile the denial of personal freedoms, not just for themselves, but for the public, as a violation of the Hippocratic Oath, denying people the ability to choose their health care. And because of that violation, they would rather live in other states than to continue under the rule of Governor Holchel and the New York State Assembly and the New York State Senate and the imposition they are making on individuals' freedom. It's incredible to see our news media tell the public, first, that they will not cover an event that is significant to the community. And then, once that event takes place and they realize that there are far too many people to ignore the event, to just let it pass by, when they come out to actually cover it, they decide that their coverage will be negative on that event. That's troubling. So rather than that, what we have done is we covered the event in photos and in videos and in interviews. Some of them were uh, done broadcast live on Facebook, and some we have recorded and you will see for the first time exclusively now. We hope that you will find this to be informative. Again, we're not telling you that you should or should not get a vaccination. We're speaking about choice and freedom and the mandates being handed down by government without any uh, interaction with the public. There was no referendum. This was pushed through by the disgraced governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, and being continued by Governor Holchel. The public had no choice. We want you to look at this and make up your own mind. Hear what the people at the protest, in fact, in a protest that we initially weren't sure if 20 people would show up, and in fact, over 600 people did in fact show up. That's a large number of people. In fact, in 15 years of doing political commentary and events, I believe that is the largest number of people to spontaneously come to an event that is non-political in the Southern Tier region in 15 years. So we ask you, please, look at the coverage that we have provided and we look forward to hearing your comments about it, as well as, please, do join us every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. But with no further ado, we will uh, show you our coverage now. Hello folks, this is Michael Voss with No Sound Bites Allowed. I am here with you today because we are covering a protest that is happening in the southern tier of New York in Broome County, actually in 
Brew County in Johnson City, New York. I am here today with Trina Nimmons. She is a certified nurse's aide. She has come out to speak about the vaccine mandate and to let her voice be heard and to support many of the workers at UHS dealing with the new mandates. Trina, first thing we want to ask, can you tell us a little bit about you? Well, first of all, my name is Trina Nemmons and I have been a certified nurse's aide for 30 years. Loyal worker and I've been at, you know, this type of work for a very long time. And I'm here today to talk about the um, mandated shot vaccine. And I feel that our rights are being taken away from us because they should give us a choice if we would like to take that, you know, shot. And I don't think that, you know, it's right for them to take our rights if we do not take that shot that we'll lose our jobs. I think that that's very immoral and they should not be doing that to us. We were working in the pandemic when it first started. We still been working in this pandemic and we and we're still working in a pandemic and i feel that we're not being treated fairly when it comes to our lives this is our life we should be able to make a choice if we would like to take that mandated shot and i don't think that it should be mandated we should have a choice because this is my life i know what should go into my body and what not should, should not go into my body so well Drina, let me ask you a lot of people will ask the question, uh, the mandate, it's a pandemic, this is uh, COVID, it's across the nation, we've shut down before. Why should you not take the, uh, the COVID vaccine? Why should you not be mandated to take it? Because first of all, I have morals. That, that's, that's against my, my, it's against my morals. I, that I should have a choice, like I said, what goes into my body. No one can tell me what I should take. This is my body. I don't care if it's about the government, this and this and that. We, this is my body. I don't feel that they should take our, you know, choice away. You know, they, they should, we, they should not be mandating people who are against being mandated to take something that we don't really even know about well, but a lot of people will ask the question uh, while you're in the health field you know it's FDA approved many of the uh, vaccinations that's not true some are uh, but let me ask you what would you say to those people who say well it's safe it's been FDA approved uh, we don't see there are some uh, repercussions some side effects to it but overall, it's about making sure everyone's going to be safe. What would you say to those people? How do they really know that? I mean, like, you hear this, you hear that, you hear different type of stories. You don't know what to believe. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I've been hearing different things, you know, and I still don't feel safe. I still do not feel safe about taking something in my body that does not belong there. And I don't think, like I said, it should be mandated. We should have a choice if we want to take that shot. And I don't think that it's fair that if we do not comply, that we are losing our jobs. When people have been working for 30, like me, plus years in the healthcare field, I mean, like, I don't think that that's fair, that we are gonna lose our job just because we don't wanna take a shot. Would you agree with, uh the original idea coming out of New York State government was that you would get a weekly test for the COVID virus if you didn't get the mandated COVID vaccine. Mm -hmm. would, is that something that you would agree with? If they do not mandate this shot and give us a choice, I do not care about getting tested every week and wearing a mask. I don't care. That's nothing to me. You know? What's bothering me is that they try to mandate, like I said, a shot that no one really knows about. And that's something that does not belong in our bodies. So if they 
let us, like I said, test every week without getting that shot, I could live with that. Now, this protest is going on. Obviously, we see there's more people who are coming to support you. There's a growing movement across the nation and around the world that also support not having mandates. What do you believe would be the best thing that, if, if you could have the best thing happen, what would be that outcome? The best thing that could happen is if they give us a chance. I'm, I mean, like, that would be the best thing to happen. For them to give us a choice, if we want to take that mandated shot or not. And personally speaking, I've been with around people that had it. I've never contracted it since I've been working. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, why should I get something and I haven't even gotten it yet? You know what I'm, I'm not even gonna say the word yet because I don't wanna bring that on myself. But uh, why should I take something in my body, like I said, that doesn't belong? I fear for my life, to tell you the truth. Okay. Uh, and many people do. Uh, let me ask you, is there anything else you want to say to the people who will be watching this about the mandates, about where you stand with them? And you and the other nurses. Well, where I stand at is, like I said, I do not feel that they should be taking our choice away. We should have a choice if we want to take that shot. That's what. That's how I really, really feel. And if those who take it, I don't have nothing against those people. That's their choice. If they want to, you know, get the mandate shot or that shot, period. But for me or anybody else, and I know there's a lot of people that feel the same way that I do, that do not want that mandated shot. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Hello folks, this is Michael Voss, Dragon of the Tier. I am still at the ever-growing event here in Johnson City, New York, where we are seeing a protest of the vaccine mandate, mostly amongst healthcare workers, specifically with UHS. And as you can hear, there are many people who are supporting the event. I have in front of me, uh, this is Tina DeBella, and you are a local uh, resident in the region. Yes. And Tina, why did you come out today to join this protest? Because I believe these vaccination mandates are illegal and unconstitutional, and they go against everyone's human right to choose their own medical care. It's a vaccine that's still in the works, it's not even tested, and we don't even know what's to come from this vaccine. And for them to force it on us, force it on our healthcare workers, on our children, on everyone, is just wrong. Now, it's a very strong opinion, and a lot of people will say, well, what about uh, the pandemic? What about all the people at risk? What would you say to them? I'm a highly risk person. I'm not getting the vaccine, and they will have to kill me to give me this vaccine if they make it mandatory. Because they don't show on the mainstream news a lot of the information. They're blocking information on Facebook, on Twitter, everywhere of anything that goes against the greatness of this vaccine and the evilness of COVID. Yeah, COVID is a very highly contagious flu. It's a flu. It's going to be here for the next 50 years in some form or another because all flus just mutate and that's what their job is. You can't live like this and this vaccine isn't doing anything. If it was, why are people that are vaccinated now told you can spread it? You need to wear a mask because you're not protected. If it doesn't protect you, why are they forcing it on people? So one of the big questions a lot of people will say is, well, you're at risk. Aren't you worried about your life? Um, so they would say, aren't you worried about your life? Are you worried about the lives of those around you since you're unvaccinated? What would you say to them? Well, number one, to protect your health is your job. 
I should have no say in what you do to make your health better or safer or whatever. And when I say safer, I mean safer in quotations because it's an illusion. There's nothing that's going to keep you safe every day. Someone dies every day. Someone gets sick every day. Someone gets hit by a car. You can't live in isolation. Living in isolation for the last year is what or is making people getting very deathly sick with a common cold, with things that they normally could fight off because they have no fear of herd immunity. That's the problem. The masks, I have asthma. I used to take an asthma inhaler whenever I got sick, got a head cold, got a cold. Now I have to take it twice a day every day because of wearing the mask. So the mask is made Mask, your personal health and quite frankly I care more about my own health than I should care about everyone around me you should care about your health before everyone around you I'm not saying go out and cough all over people but if you feel sick stay home okay. and so you are familiar that the FDA has approved one of the drugs and sort people of. will say that that's safe sort of it's not truly, I just read an article today, it's not truly passed by the FDA because it has gone, hasn't gone through its trials. The only reason they're doing that is the FDA's government control. So they're doing it in coer coercion with the government. It's all BS. Now a lot of people will say, well, this is a conspiracy theory. They'll no. say, well, we have to do this. No. And, well, let me, let me ask you this. What is the best outcome? You're here to support the nurses to help those who seek to have uh, no mandate on vaccine. Not to stop yes. people from getting Correct. a vaccination, but no mandate. So what would you say is the best thing that could possibly happen? It's not that we don't believe in vaccines. We don't believe in forced vaccinations, especially of a so-called vaccine that hasn't been through its trials. So none of these people are saying don't get vaccinated, don't wear a mask. You do what you and your doctors feel is best for your health. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. You want to get vaccinated, get vaccinated. But don't push your fears on us that do not believe in it. And is there any final thought you would like to share with those who will be watching the video? I just hope everyone can stand behind not only the health care workers, teachers, parents of kids in school, everybody. Because I can guarantee this is just one step in their plan to force this vaccination on everyone. And that should never happen in America. And thank you for your time today. Thank you. And thank you for supporting this group. Absolutely. Hello everyone, again this is Michael Boss, Dragon Sun Tier. I am still down in Johnson City. We have a huge crowd. I would estimate at this point we have reached over a hundred people uh, and we have many photos of that. We are also taking interviews and right now we have a local individual of interest. This is Mr. Rich Bertel, actually out of Owego, New York, uh, in Tioga County. Tioga County, yep. And uh, Rich, I see your sign. Let me ask you. Why are you out here today? Well, for a multitude of reasons. I mean, the vaccine issue is something that's disturbed me for a number of years. This is long before COVID. Really, a lot of this problem goes back to 1986, when the government decided to remove the normal liability process for vaccines in the United States and put it into a, a kind of socialist type of liability program. And and the uh, <laughs> vaccine courts are kind of secretive. And, and you know, not transparent as, as liability should be. So this problem's going on for a long time as far as the vaccine goes. Uh, the COVID vaccine, I think, has really brought it to attention. You know, it's a new vaccine. It's under emergency authorization only, and yet they're putting mandates on it. And it doesn't even fully FDA approved for most people. I just don't think it's a good idea to mandate vaccines ever. And beyond that, the mask mandates. I don't believe mandating those either. And really, we started this mess last year with the lockdowns. The lockdowns were a problem, too. A lot, many of us said that, you know, especially with closing the schools, you send the kids home, they're going to have psychological problems. I've seen it even my, even my own nieces and nephews, that they've had problems due to not being able to go to school. We've seen obesity rates go up, uh, uh, you know, drug addiction, and uh, even suicides among teens has increased 
due to the lockdown policy of last year. We're concerned they might even bring those back. You know, we don't want the lockdowns, we don't want mask mandates, we don't want vaccine mandates. People should be free to choose what they want to do to protect their own health. We've got to stop the tyranny. So one of the big questions a lot of people would say is, well, if you're against the mandate, then you're against vaccines. But from what you're saying, it doesn't sound like your position. Can you no. clarify? No, no, not at all. No, I mean, and, and I think, uh, and they're not all equal either. I think people have a right to choose, hey, this vaccine's right for me. The risk to reward ratio looks good. I want to take this vaccine. But maybe another one says, you know what? I think I'd rather not get this one because I think that I'm not at a high risk and there might be more, more uh, risk to the vaccine itself that I want to be concerned about. So everybody should be able to be free to choose. What about those people who say, well, it's a pandemic. You don't get a choice. You have to do it. Yeah, what the biggest disappointment in this is, and I really hope if we get another one of these in the near future, let's hope it's a long, long time from now, is the technology we have available is kind of uh, kind of pathetic, really. We don't really have much more technology than we had 100 years ago during the 1918 pandemic. Uh, what people, people, I think, would be responsible to do the right thing if they knew they were infected and contagious. We don't have the tools to do that. I mean, why don't we have a tool in our home, take, take a check of your, of your status in the morning, hey, I'm contagious, okay, I'm going to stay home today. I want to get anybody sick. You know, this, what I call all these tools we have are pre-crime tools. Let's put a mask on because there's a slight chance you might be sick and might be contagious. So we're going to interfere with your liberty and your freedom and your right to, to do what you want to do because you have a tiny chance that you might be contagious. So the, so the mask is a pre-crime tool. The vaccine is a pre-crime tool. Lockdowns are a pre-crime tool. Quarantine is a pre-crime tool. All these tools that we're trying to use to try to, to fight this pandemic are, are tools of tyranny, of pre-crime. People are not necessarily infected, and yet we're going to, you know, send them home, lock them down, make them wear masks, do this, that, and the other thing. When they're, they're, they're you know, almost surely they're not infected, they're not contagious. And then, you know, the irony now is we've been finding out the vaccinated are contagious. You know, and they flipped the policy. They said at first you don't have to mask, but then they found out, oh, gee, we're wrong. If you're vaccinated, it's going to reduce your risk of, of death and symptoms, but you're still contagious. You can pass it on to others. So it's been that's been, a, I think, a partial failure of the vaccine program as the people are still contagious. That's part of why this pandemic is still going on. They're not dying necessarily, but they're still spreading it, and that's why we can't get this thing to, to stop, even though a few months ago it looked like it was, you know, winding down. The pandemic was, was almost over. Well, they, they've said that before a few times throughout the last oh, yeah. year and yeah. a half. But let me ask you this. So, Rich, uh, what you're here, you're supporting the healthcare workers who are saying they do not believe in a mandate, not that they don't believe in vaccinations. Um, you're supporting freedom of individuals to make a choice. What is the best outcome that you think can come from this protest today and for the healthcare workers? Yeah, they, first they should remove the mandates for, all, for everybody, especially the healthcare workers. And, and in their case particularly, many of the healthcare workers have, have, have caught COVID. You know, they've been, they've been around it so much in the last year and a half. Many of them caught COVID and recovered, and certainly they should allow for an antibody test to exempt them from having to get a vaccine. I mean, it, and Israel and other, other uh, states and countries have done studies and found out that natural immunity from having caught COVID and recovered is, is superior to the vaccine immunity. So, you know, and there's maybe an additional benefit to getting the vaccine in addition to that. But, but and I'm not saying people go out and get sick on purpose to get natural immunity. But many of the healthcare workers, you know, did get sick, did recover, they had the natural immunity. Why are we not even loving, giving them the opportunity to say, hey, I got natural immunity, why do I need to get the shot? You know, we, we're not even doing that. So it's just the lack of freedom is very disturbing. Is there any final thought you would like to share with anyone who will be watching the video at this time? Uh, no, that pretty much covers it. Thanks for interviewing me. No problem. Thank you for taking the time. Yeah, have a good day. You too. start off uh, first can you tell me what's your name oh my name is Devin Devin mm -hmm. okay and Devin do you live in the southern tier of New York I do live in the southern tier of New York okay, okay. that's all right that's what I'm saying we are speaking a little louder okay the mic's pointing I'll do at you my best. you're doing fantastic okay. so Devin today you're out with a couple hundred of your local residents, your friends, family members that are out here uh, in the community. 
and they are against the vaccine mandate. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you support that? Yes, I don't support anything that's coercive. It's a freedom of choice. Okay. Now, a lot of people would say, you have a young child, you're a younger woman yourself, you should get the mandate either to protect your child, to protect yourself or others. What would you tell them? I would tell them that they have the right just as much as I have a right. We fight for freedom in America over many different issues. And I think that everybody here can also agree with that, that if they don't feel that it's the right for them, even just one person, but obviously there's multiple people here to prove that choice. Mm -hmm. And that's the key word is choice. So you agree that the healthcare workers shouldn't be mandated. Not that they can't choose to have a vaccine, but they shouldn't be mandated. Absolutely. They choose the best for their body. They do the research. They choose whether or not they want to get vaccinated, just like any other medical procedure in this country. And this is definitely something that has differing research on it. So it's very hard to determine if it's 100% safe and effective. There's been, uh, hang on one second. Now you've probably heard that the FDA uh, approved one of the uh, vaccines and did that make you feel like, well, that's safer now? Or is it still something that you have a question about? The FDA regulates over thousands of chemicals into our country that are safe in other countries. Just because the FDA regulates it does not mean that it's 100% safe and effective. Okay. Um, there's a lot of school mandates that are being said right now. Not just for workers at UHS and the medical field, but now they're talking about mandating kids in schools. Your child, if he has to go to daycare, they're talking about, well, he's a little young, but uh, in that range. What would you say to people who say, well, we have to, we have to vaccinate the little kids too? Well, I would say that the medical exemption and religious exemption used to be a thing, but now that that's going away, it's really hard to say what the intention is here. Are they trying to protect us? Are they trying to force us to do something that we don't really agree with? When you have kids that are going to school and they have exemptions in the past, but this has been forced upon us and most vaccinations are required to have 10 years of research and just FDA regulations. It goes through a long process for it to be shoved on us over less than a year is very worrisome. Definitely. And let me ask you finally, and I thank you for your time today to speak with us. Uh, I know, first time you're on camera, huh? It is. Ah, uh, don't worry about it. You're doing fantastic. So let me ask you, if you, what would you say would be the best thing that could happen if, when the UHS, uh, Governor Holchul, the elected officials, when they see this crowd, now that the news media have finally shown up, they're seeing all these people, regular people that we're told didn't exist, that are saying no, rat, no mandate, what do you think is the best thing that could happen? The best thing that could happen is seeing that people here have a positive intention over their future and their freedom of choice. And that it wouldn't be something that is dismissed, that we will be heard, but it won't be something that will be shoved upon us a year or two from now. We stand here today to prove that we are against this, and it's not going to change in a year or so. So the fight shouldn't continue to go on, it should be recognized or else we will continue to grow in peace and harmony and we're fighting for our right as an American. Was there anything else that, now that you get the opportunity, you can say anything you want, is there anything else you'd like to share with any people who may see the video? Um, do your research. There's so many resources out there. You have the internet, it's limitless. And you have people, word of mouth is the most powerful thing you can have. And just go with intention, love your family and others. This doesn't have to be something that we have to fight about. This could be something that is beautiful. We can unite over freedom. That is what Americans did in the revolution. This is what we can do again. It doesn't have to be negative. This is Thank you for that.
Michael Voss, and this is No Sound Bites Allowed. I am out today in Johnson City. I am covering an event uh, that is going on live. There are hundreds of people that are here, and as far as I am aware, I'm the only news media that is covering this. I'm going to show you in just a second all the people who are out here. They are in Johnson City, New York. They are protesting the mandatory vaccinations, especially for healthcare workers. We've been doing some interviews with people. We've taken photos. That'll be coming out later today. But I want you to see exactly what is going on right now to get an idea of how many people are here and what they're saying. So these are live views of the event. I want you to get an idea of the scope of the people. Now you're, I want you to see how many people have come out in opposition of the vast vaccine mandates. This is a huge crowd, folks, and this has been growing since 4 o'clock this afternoon. It's expected to go until 7 o'clock. We have people all the way down. And as you can hear, there are a lot of people who are supporting the event and speaking about it as we go. I'm going to go across the street in just a moment, and I can tell you that I've had some very interesting uh, interviews already, speaking to several of the people who are here, who have been supporting the healthcare workers, and supporting the right of American citizens not to be mandated to have a vaccination. And you can just hear, you can hear this, and there are a lot of voices here. I'm just trying to get across the street real quick, and that's just going to be difficult to do. So we're going to try to get across the street here. I just want you to see what's going on. It's amazing to see these many people that have come out that are supporting this idea because we're constantly told by the major news media that no one supports this, that this is some fringe idea. Well, this seems to be regular people. This is regular people in New York State. These are regular people in this community that are saying, no, they have a different point of view. And so we're just getting across now. I want you to get an idea of the scope here, folks. Look at that crowd. Look at how many people are here. Now, I know several news media agencies in the region have declined to come out and to cover this protest. We found that out earlier today. But we are here and we are covering it. We have been doing interviews. We do have exclusive photos. But I just want you to see, this is, this is what the major news media declined to cover. These are the members of the community that the news media did not want to speak to, that they did not want to cover in this event. And we are here live. This is all live, folks. I want you to see. This is your, compu this is your community speaking out, talking about how they feel about this event. Peacefully protesting peacefully letting their voices be heard to know that they believe in choice. Now you can tell me you agree or you disagree, but I want you to know this is your community. And this is what the news media is not telling you about. That they have not been covering this. That they have chosen, especially about this event, they chose not to come out. They did not want to cover this. I want, And that's why this is very important. That's why this is absolutely essential for you to see this. Because this is what you were told isn't happening. This is what you were told you should not see, that you should not support. This is what the news media is denying you from being able to see. So oh, I, that's why I want you to see this, because this is your community, folks. And these are people who believe, like you, everyone has a right to freedom. Everyone should have a choice. And that's important. I, I truly believe it's important. Now, we're going to go back in a few moments to covering, uh, going back out and doing some more interviews, taking more photos of this event that we are exclusively covering here at No Sound Bites Allowed. We have some more interviews and we believe we will have an opportunity to do an interview 
with the uh, woman who is responsible for putting this event together. Uh, and again, that's an exclusive thing because the rest of the news media would not do this for you. They would not come out here. They would not cover this event. And that is a tragedy. So, um, I'm going to look forward to seeing some of your comments. Look forward. We will have an update, more information about this coming out later today uh, when we do our full story. But until then, hey, cute puppy. Um, but until then, we're going to be back. Oh, now the news media is showing up. Now they're showing up. All right. Because I think it's a little hard to deny that there are people who believe in the vaccine and, and not having the vaccine mandates. And so the news media is just now coming together on that. All right, folks, let me try and get some of my interview set and then I will be back. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me. This is Michael Voss of No Sound Bites Allowed here in the Southern Tier. I'm at Johnson City, New York. We are seeing a huge turnout, an event that the news media denied, said they didn't want to cover this. They have now come out because there are, we estimate about 300 people who have come out to say they do not believe in a mandated ban of vaccination. Not that they don't believe in vaccinations, they don't believe in mandating that. And so they have come out to support the UHS workers, the healthcare workers, and each other. We've been covering this since about 3.30 when the event first started up. We have watched people come in from the first two to now about 300. We're going to be providing with all the coverage we can and interviews. I thank you for taking a moment to see us, and we hope you pay attention to what your fellow neighbors have to say. Yes, it's Michael Voss, No Sound Bites Allowed. I am still at the protest for the vaccine in Johnson City, the vaccine mandate, let me be clear. And just a quick little glance, as you can see, there are, oops, as you can see, there are over 550 people at this event right now. Over 550, and it is still growing. But I wanted to take a moment, because the news media finally showed up after initially saying they wouldn't come here, and when we were here at 3.45 and there were only two people here and no one knew who was going to show up, I want, you, I want you to take a moment to speak with one of those ladies. And Maurice, uh, no, Trina Nimmons. Trina Nimmons, uh, excuse me. Trina, you're on live right now. How many people were here at 3, what, what time did you get here? Like 3.45. Okay, and you were here with how many people? It was like me, my sister, and three and three other uh, people, our kids. Okay, so about five people at that point. And I know we did the interview before the crowd actually showed up. I right. think before 20 people. Now that you are seeing over 550 people who have come out, joined you and your friends, and said, "Hey, we believe in what you're saying. We believe in having choice on the mandates." Let me ask you, how do you feel? I feel really great that I'm not the only one that feel this way and I feel that everyone should get their choice. We should have a choice if we want to get that shot and I think that they should stop the mandate and I'm happy to see that a lot of people feel exactly the same way that I do. Now a lot of people were saying before this that all the people, these anti-vaxxers, these people who are against the mandate, that they're all crazy. There's over 550 people here. There are doctors here, there are nurses here, medical professionals like Stand yourself. Days. That's right. So, and all regular people as well. Yes. What does that make you think? I, I feel that there's hope, you know? I feel that there's hope and I hope that, you know, everyone that's watching this, they join us and, you know, talk and speak what you feel. If you feel that you do not want the shot, speak out about it. We need a, a, a lot of people. We need everyone behind us 
because they need to stop the mandate. We need a choice. We do not need to be coerced into getting something that we do not know about. All right. I thank you. And I'm glad to see that you're still here. It's, uh, I think, about 5 o'clock at the moment. We've gotten 550, possibly 600 people to show up. I think someone's going to pay attention, finally. And I hope they do, and thank you very much. You're very welcome. So again, folks, I'm going to show you, again, this is the crowd. This is the audience. This is, this is who's here. My body, my choice. So I want you to know, it's not what the media sometimes wants it to portray it as. There are a lot of people who are here in the southern tier, in New York State, around the country, that believe they have a choice about their medical, uh, uh, their medical life, that they deserve to be able to choose for themselves and for their families and friends. Many of them are medical professionals and in the medical field. And over, uh, we believe at this moment, 600 people are now here and they're making their voices heard. Politicians need to act up. You know what? The news media wasn't going to come here until they saw 100 people show up. We were here when there was five. They don't want you to know this. We're gonna make sure you know and we'll have our full coverage later tonight. Thank you for taking time to be here with us today. Hello folks, and again, this is Michael Voss, Dragon of the Southern Tier from No Sound Bites Allowed. I am with the protesters right now. They are now walking around the hospital to highlight their opposition. There are over 600 people, and there is, as you can hear, a lot of support. So let's take a look. Come on. If I can get there, guys. This is live, folks. That's right. We are live in Johnson City, and as you can see, over 600 people are joined together to say that mandates are a bad thing, to say that people should have choice and freedom. And we can see right now that the crowd is wrapping around. They are walking around the hospital to let UHS and New York State and the elected officials know their position on this. Hi, there, guys. And so we are live with this right now. That's right. And we are getting the signs. I'll show you. Trying not to get hit by cars. But I want you to see how many people. Because remember, every time you've been hearing from the major news media, you know, right there, when they cover this, they like to tell you that you're alone. You're the only one who thinks that the mandate should be, that there shouldn't be a mandate. That people should have choice. They should have freedom to choose for themselves their own health care. They tell you you're the only one, that you're by yourself, you're the fringe. Guess what? 600 people in Johnson City, Broome County, New York, they agree with you. People in France, in Germany, in Australia, protesting, doing the same thing, they agree with you. You are not alone. Never believe that story. Because when people are asked, look at them, they've come out, look at this line. These are health care professionals, doctors, nurses, these are moms, dads, your neighbors, people in your community. And these are the people they're telling you don't exist. You hear that in nightly news all the time. New York State elected officials, they tell you all the time, 
No, they don't exist. Everyone believes in the mandate. No, they don't. No, they do not. But this is live. This is real. This is not edited by the news media. This is real. Hold up, folks. Let the car get past. Let the car. Come on. Come on. Come on, real quick. Come on. Come on. So yes, as I said folks, we are getting lots of coverage of this live event. Six, over 600 people have been at this event. We estimate somewhere around 500 people are walking around UHS as we speak. And honestly, that's pretty much the biggest event in the Southern Tier in many, many years. In many, many years. So, that's it. Let us keep our jobs. Let us keep our jobs. Let us keep our jobs. You can hear them, folks. Let us keep our jobs. Let us keep our jobs. Good for you, man. Hey. Glad you're doing this. Us. Yeah, I'm trying. Oh, by the way, we're live, just so you know. That's excellent. Well, I like to let people know. No, no, no right. like surprising I have no people. Problem with that. Good for you, man. Yeah, I'm just happy that the news media finally reversed their position and decided to actually come out and cover this and stop telling people that yeah, that you. no one exists, that I there's no opposition. It's yeah. like, yeah, there yeah, is. Yeah, there's definitely another side, but, you know, the media doesn't want to let you see that. No. You know? so. And I'm so happy that we're actually getting to show it and say, yes. you know what, yes. choice is more important. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I've seen you at a couple of events before. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. As I recall, not all of them that I agree with personally, but you stand out. But that's okay. You stand out. You make your voice heard. Freedom is about choice, you know. So, yeah. Hey, I've never. And, and people who just sit and do nothing, they're you know, they're just we're going to be taken over. Yeah. Well, you know, I've never silenced anyone ever. No. Nope. I'm perfectly happy covering everybody speaking out and let them know. That's excellent. Well, I'm happy to see it, man. I just uh, wanted to tell you. I'm happy to see okay. you. By the way, you look healthier. You got bigger legs since well, the last time I saw you. <laughs> well, thank you, man. I'm trying. Yeah, bulky. I mean bulky, you uh, know, like well, working I'm out. The, I'm in the gym a lot. So. Yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> thank you, brother. All right. Good seeing you. That's right, folks. This is not political. This isn't about politics. This is about you letting your voice be heard. And the, and the line is still coming. Look at that. That's your, this, these are your neighbors. And this is a good thing. I tell you, this is a good thing. By the way, folks, not everyone seems to agree.
You know, I love this, folks, because it's not it's not some fringe group. This is your community. And they're making themselves heard. And I want to ask, where's Governor Holchel? I want to ask, where's Assemblywoman Donald Lopardo? Where is uh, County Executive Jason Garnar? Uh, where are our elected officials? Where are they? Why are they not down here? What is their opinion on this? Do they believe in mandates? Do they believe you have no right to choose? That you don't get to choose your own personal health care? Where are our elected officials? Why are they allowing this to happen? Why are they pushing this? You don't have to agree with me. Ask the question. Because they're telling you that you shouldn't. You've been told. You don't exist. Well, here's the proof. You exist. It's incredible, folks. Look at how many people sharing the American dream of freedom, of choice, of saying, hey, our voices matter. Our choices matter. It's a beautiful thing, folks. And I will be putting together all of my coverage of today's event from 3.45 until uh, the end of the event. The only news media to be here from beginning to end. I'll have that plus I have at least 400 photos to go through. I'm going to try and put that all together for you folks so you can expect to see that video um, later tonight, early tomorrow. Showing you all the different... the the growth of the crowd, the different signs, the different people and their views. And by the way, hey Bill, say hi. Hey. Live. Bill Houston Podcast, subscribe. That's right. Bill's a friend. Yeah. He also covers a lot of interesting things. So, I want you to know, folks, this is important. This is a watershed <laughs> moment. Broome County has never had so many people spontaneously come together like this. It's beautiful. Watch out behind you, you get cars. Making sure everyone's going to be safe. So it's been quite the event, folks. So many people. Look at this. Let's take a look back behind us again. Gotta get my equipment back. Thank you for watching that. That helps. It's a success. Oh, it's been an incredible success. So as you can see, folks, and on September 17th, there is plans for yet another event to say, mandates need to end. All right, folks, again, look forward to seeing my coverage later on today. I will have that for you, and I hope that everyone's going to be well, everyone's going to be free. This is no sound bites allowed. Hang on. Well, this is no sound bites allowed. I am Michael Voss, and I have been covering the Johnson City, New York uh, vaccine, mandatory vaccine protest 
live with you and I hope that to hear your comments and I hope you see our video later today. Thank you very much.